So today we're talking about the X-T2's new firmware, the GH5 and also the X-H1. So just get, let's just get right into it. The X-T2 just had its firmware update and it's, I haven't, I haven't used all of the functions, but it did add a couple of things, which is focus stacking, which basically means you can take multiple images of the same scene at different focus points and merge them all together. The camera doesn't do it, but you have the ability to shoot those pictures one after the other and create a nice, either sharp focused image, or I would assume also a, a image with a lot of out of focus area. Anyway, that's not what we're focusing on today. We're focusing, we're focusing today on video and the X-T2 has added 120 frames per second at 1080p. And before I go into any of the other features, I want to make, I want to just stick a pin on that right there for a second, because it tells me that one, Fuji's not done with the X-T2. Two, um, the X-T2 sensor and processor, processor has a lot to, has a lot of benefits. It just has a lot of headroom to push and to get more function out of this camera. And it also tells me that Fuji is really concerned and focused on the video customers out there. The addition of also getting F log straight to the SD card, because a lot of people have been concerned about um, shooting with the X-T2 and, and being able to grade the footage. Personally, I don't think I need to shoot it in log to get a good image out of the X-T2. I think I can just set my white balance, adjust some of the, um, the, the, either the film simulation or adjust my black levels, adjust my saturation levels and go from there. But a lot of guys want that total control so that they can dial in whatever LUT or look that they want when they get to post. And so what, what would I say about these three cameras? Which camera to buy? Why would I buy it? And what are the advantages? Well, the X-H1, I'll just start with that camera. The IBIS is definitely something I'm interested in. I may not run across town with the X-H1 in hand, but I may want to take it out, maybe out of a coat pocket. Just, just follow me for a second. Or take it out of a bag quickly, shoot some B-roll, slip it right back into the bag and be done. I don't have to set up a crane. I don't have to set up a jib. I don't have to set up any moving or a dolly or, or a um, steady cam or anything of the such. I could just take the camera out, shoot, do what I have to do, put it back in, keep it moving. Um, also, it's a bit more robust. Um, it does have a higher data rate than the X X-T2 as, as of right now. I'm not sure if Fuji's gonna upgrade the X-T2 to get more data to the card. I would, I would actually try and get 4K 60p out of the X-T2 since the processor is pretty much the same on the X-H1 as the X-T2 and the X-T2 and the X-H1 seem to have a lot of headroom to process this, this information. Anyway, beside that for the um, X-H1, the body, the IBIS also, and, and also the 200 megabits per second, um, the camera is also, um, um, that's more in the photography department, but the shutter has been improved so that it doesn't have as much shake when you press it. It's a more, it's more of a soft press type shutter, which I think is a, a good addition for, for photographers. But me personally, as a video person, um, the touch screen will be helpful as well. Um, I'm just thinking what else, what are the reasons I had. Personally, I, I, I wanted to stick with Fuji because of Fuji's color and their, um, the, the whole firmware update system, I think it's just a good move for someone who's getting into video and doesn't want to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a bigger camera like the Ursa or even um, a high-end Sony Alpha camera. Um, why would I pick the GH5? GH5, I've talked about this before. I'm going to continue doing this comparison. This is more like an intermediary section of this three-part series. Um, Right now I want to get more X-H1 footage. I need to get downtown or I need to get my own X-H1, whatever, whichever comes first. But in the meantime, I'm just giving you guys as much information as I can. The GH5, I would buy the GH5 if I'm a one man band. If I don't have anybody else to help me, if I, I'm doing a ton of different um, pieces of content. It may not just be narratives or movies. It may be uh, live events. It might be something that needs to be recorded for more than half an hour camera can do that um, and if you're doing all these things on your own you kind of want a camera that pretty much does it all it's not a it's not necessarily a specialty camera and also the ibis on the gh5 is amazing um, the gh5 also gives you the ability to view LUTs in camera so you can actually see the look that you're going to get before you get home which is amazing 
Um, it has slow motion. It has dual card slots like both two of the other cameras. Um, but I think the biggest thing with the GH5 with the dual card slots is the fact that it can roll from one slot to the next. When the one card's full, it just jumps to the other card. That's that's pretty that's pretty helpful. Um, also, the body's robust. Um, touch screen it can actually flip to face you so like right now i'm shooting with the x xt2 and i can't see what i'm shooting i'm hoping the camera's still recording um, i have to keep checking periodically to make sure that it is um, for focus i have to actually use my phone check the focus i'll turn on um, continuous focus but i could set my focus with the xt with the gh5 put focus peaking on and be able to see while i'm sitting here what's going on also micro four thirds you know people can people argue that yeah you can get a bunch of little lenses to throw on there. That's that's par partly true. I would say that I agree with that. Um, the X-T2 and the X-H1, they don't have as many lenses, native lenses made for that system. You can buy adapters, of course, and put whatever lens you want on there, but a native lens, there are, there are a few companies that make them and there are more companies coming up now. Um, and the last thing I would say about the GH5, the GH5 has great battery life. That's one thing I would give it hands down applause to is the, the battery life. It's not as good as the GH4, but it takes what the GH4 was doing and it, and it just takes, maybe it gives you the same amount of battery life because of the IBIS, maybe a little bit less, but essentially you're getting great battery life. And that's pretty much the things I would focus on specifically for the um, GH5. XT2, I would buy the XT2 if I want to save some money. If I didn't want a camera as big as the XH1, if, um, that's pretty much it. If I, wasn't so, if I wasn't so concerned about IBIS, I would buy an XT2 if I was someone in the market for a new camera. And you can pretty much get them for about close to 1200 maybe even 1100 if you look carefully and the used, you know, used um, photographers who are selling their gear or on eBay. That's pretty much it, guys. Um, I just wanted to talk about the firmware updates from the, the XT2, which I need to give you guys the last few updates of this camera. So they added the... They added the um, F-Log, they added um, 120 frames a second in 1080p. They also added focus stacking and they added some, they increased the focus abilities in low light, which I, I have seen some improvements. It feels like the camera is more responsive, particularly with the, um, the lens I'm using right now, the 35 millimeter 1.4. Good. Just had to check the camera was still, this camera was still recording. Um, just this upgrade has made the XC2 more competitive to other cameras. Yes, it doesn't. I wish they had a little bit slow motion in, in 4K, but maybe that's coming in a future update. But just to add a slow motion, and a lot of people have been actually, which I think is amazing, they have been resizing their 1080p to fit into a 4K timeline, which is something a few of us, I may do in a couple of videos, but a few people I've heard have been doing. And I think that's, that's a good look. If the picture looks good, why not try it? Um, it does, if the, if the autofocus has improved so significant, it will give competition to some of the other cameras as well. So guys, I hope this video was helpful. I hope you understand that the X-T2 is not, has not been forgotten by Fuji because they have a new line X-H1. They're constantly upgrading their cameras, even the older ones. Um, the X-E3 got an update, the X-100F got an update, the X-Pro2 got an update, and so did the X-H1 got some updates as well. Um, nothing... I'm going to talk about in this video, but at least these things were updated and you can see Fuji's constantly helping and reaching back and upgrading their, their, their line of cameras. Okay guys, until next time, this is Seawall here, peace.